I've been involved in games for a long time, and I've gone through a lot of technology transitions. Um, you know, I got into games when CD-ROMs were replaced cartridges, and when games went from only 2D to 3D, and then when mobile gaming came out. So I've seen a lot of transitions um, in the space. And now as I get into um, VR, I think the main thing that you know we just have to keep in mind is that as a, I like to call myself an ex-engineer because I had to realize that if I wanted to make games that connected and experiences that resonated, um, that games at, at its core are emotional experiences, not technical experiences, even though we use software. And I had to understand that human beings are irrational. Um, we're not robots, we're not logical. And just like a movie director or a book author, um, you have to understand how to create um, experiences emotional experiences through games. So tension, fun, um, any kind of um, emotional experience is powerful for games and entertainment. So as I get into VR specifically, my whole mindset is looking at what kind of experiences that would touch your brain, give you that dopamine hit from you know either figuring out how to beat someone or to juke someone in basketball or um, or the or uh, interesting reaction or celebration after you do good and you get all hype, um, all those things are experiences that you got to figure out how to how to create um, around sports and make it happen enough to where the game is engaging. Um, and the, one of the most powerful things about VR is the immersion, which is kind of cliche, kind of obvious. But um, when I first started re more recently playing VR, because I kind of had I actually was a VR skeptic ten years ago when Oculus came out. Um, and uh, but uh, Meta's done a really good job of reducing a lot of friction and making it more user friendly for the masses and not as hardcore technologists who will fight through that. Or if we want to play a PC game, we'll configure our you know our, our graphics card. You know, most people won't go through those fights, which is and same thing with VR. And uh, but the immersion and this physical presence. I had a football player like literally invade my personal space and I jump back like, oh crap. You know, and that kind of experience is powerful. It's memorable, it sticks in your brain, um, and you can't replicate it on a console or a mobile. And so we're gonna really lean in hard now on trying to build out experiences that um, give you that sense of presence when you play sports and you have teammates and they're near you. Your social aspects of people being in physical space and being able to play catch a football with your friend, uh, with him, seeing a virtual representation of him, you throwing the ball and you can catch it in, in a virtual um, room. You know, those kind of experiences just can't be replicated in any form. So we're experimenting hard about, okay, how do we take advantage of that? Because social is also naturally an engaging, emotionally touching experience and just building things around sports um, in that way. It's challenging, but that's the beauty of a new platform Whoever figures that out is going to, you know, take the lead in how, you know, this sports, at least for me personally, is being experienced. Um, I think we we tried to do that with 2K and it, it worked, um, and I think we got a real good chance now with VR and just understanding if you really are into games, really think hard about experience, not the functionality, not the feature, because you can you can implement features that don't connect. And most, in, but we want to make sure that our games engage you in experiences and touch you. It's a tricky thing. It took me a while to understand and understand that framework. But I would encourage folks to, when they're building out their experiences, to think about the um, how people are going to feel about what you're doing than than what they're doing. Could I just I just uh, underline what Marcus just said about the importance of experience. He, expressed it better than I did, but I think the, what, I, what particularly I noticed in his response was how he said, well, you see, think about it like the way experiences happen in film or the way experiences happen in literary um, or creations. Thinking about this new medium as a medium of expression and a medium of experience is the core, as that is the core, not the fact that it's got these new bells and whistles that um, come out every couple of years, as I said before. I think this is exactly the, the way and the success of his, uh, of his own work. Uh, Marcus's work illustrates that. Yeah, uh, so it's sort of a theoretical thing. We talk about experiences. I came out of the agency world where 
we always talked about the experience over something else, right? Um, so I'll throw it to you, Daniel. What do we, in VR and AR, what do we contrast the experience to? Is it functionality or? Because I think that's one of the big misconceptions, right? People are trying to pick up what's the best device based on what are the bells and whistles? What, let's do a list of features. And to me, that seems like totally the wrong way to evaluate a device. It's about the experience, but then it's really hard to talk about or explain what I mean when I'm saying the experience and why it's the most valuable part. I think experience goes along with this word immersion, right? We were talking about this before. Um, you know, I think that complete immersion, whatever that means to you, is going to mean different to somebody else, but um, that's kind of what these devices are chasing, right? When you look at the the sim world, okay, so driving simulators, driving, uh, flying simulators, you know, the things that these, you know, devices plus VR are trying to replicate are, you know, um, electrical impulses in your inner ear and um, also trying to, you know, create some sort of agency with the immersion, right, to, to feel as though you're there to give you, you know, to, to, to quote a really terrible kind of, uh, uh, trope for VR, this empathy machine, right? To make you feel as though you're there, that you're experiencing those things. Um, I think that when we talk about experience and what that means with immersion, I think from looking at it at the back end, and we do this with design as we look at, okay, how are, what's our entry point into the user's thought process? How do we get them to think a certain way and do a certain thing through color, through character, through narrative, audio. Um, you know, how do we direct their gaze? And how can we do that consistently um, across the experience? And you really do, I think that's where theory comes in and we understand, you know, how, you know, VR is just, you know, single point perspective, right? And this goes back to the second renaissance. And, you know, we're talking about uh, Brunelleschi and his mirror and Alberti and his window. And these things that we now kind of take for granted were fundamental in shifting uh, the, you know, the zeitgeist and the how we saw our world, right? And is an experience that one of you in this room um, may or may not create, is that going to change our human experience, right? Is, and, and how does it do that? How does it enter the user? And how does it manifest itself? Um, for, not only from you know, a narrative perspective, but uh, uh, a real kind of, how do you manipulate that idea in there organically and naturally? And I think experience and immersion um, are a very good way to get there, um, as long as you don't just treat it as a novelty, right? Treat it as speaking with your audience in a new and a different way. And um, I think that's where um, user experience um, comes into play, but user experience is also, you know, a host of a hundred little things that add up to uh, something much larger.